Why did you leave the, the record industry to come back into radio? Could you talk about that? I was in my kitchen in Chicago, and I'd just gotten home from a road trip. And maybe Johnson just got me at the right time. But I was I was literally standing in the kitchen, phone rings. This was pre, pre, pre any phone identification. You answered it when the phone rang. Right. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Galvert, Johnson here. You're coming home. And I said, well, let me look at my book. I may be in Detroit. And he goes, no, you're coming home. There's an opening at, um, at WRIF, and we're putting the band back together. I said, Jim, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have a job, a good job, and it's with CBS Records here, and I'm living in Chicago. Uh, quite frankly, I don't know why I would come back to uh, want to do radio, because he said, we're putting the band back together. It's you, Arthur, Karen Civelli, and I believe at the time it was J.J. and the Morning Crew, it was Jay Brando who was doing Middays. Wow. It was Arthur doing Afternoons. Michael Stevens was in there somewhere. Too. Michael Stevens was... was he already gone? I think he was already gone, Buzzy. I think he was already gone. The, Sorry. But anyway, any, I, anyway, I said, uh, okay, I'm flying into Detroit. I forget, I was working a record. And when I say working a record, when you came to town, you went to every radio station in town with the new... Like I said in the, the previous podcast, you would come to town with the new, if you had a Billy Joel record, you would certainly take it to all the FM radio stations. You would also take it to the AM radio stations because you were pushing a single from that album. Um, anyway, Glass Houses, for example, Billy Joel, and you were pushing it, still rock and roll to me. Right. All right. So that's so you would spend two days, do a couple of dinners, two lunches, and then get back on the plane, fly home, and wait for the conference call and say, I got the song <laughs> added at CKLW, at which point I would get a big bonus, and I was done for a couple of weeks. Because anytime you got a record added at CKLW, that means that they would come in for 50,000 orders right. for the record. Johnson caught me at the right time. I flew into Detroit. I was doing something. Went by and I saw the radio station. Obviously, it was two trailers together, and it just had this like this W four type bunkhouse feel to it. And I remember I I did not know Tom Bender. I did not know Tom Bender. I knew Tom Bender from being on the air, and he did a a, a, a night show, and um, and it may have only been on Sunday nights, but whatever. I knew the name. I sat down with Bender across the street at a Holiday Inn. And we had a very, we had a really good chat. And he was like, why does Johnson want to do this thing? Uh, I said, I, I don't know. He says, well, he keeps telling me because he knows it's going to work. He knows it's going to work. J.J. and the morning crew had just left W4, where they were huge. Right. By the way, and, we had just, uh, I had gone to Riff at that point after five years at oh, W4. Okay. Yep. And Jay Hoker was the general manager. Yep. And he said, and the ratings came out, and it was the first time that anybody had beaten Riff. And W4 beat him, and that was our target, target, target. Yeah. And he said, why don't you go celebrate with those people? You've earned it. And so I went back, and we had a party, and we you know, did all that. And then I recruited Savelli and anybody else who yeah. wanted to come. Yeah. And well, told Bender, this is, you know, and Johnson was already there. Yeah, it was, it was before me, so you can yeah. take total credit if you want. I don't and, care. And no, I mean, I'm just, it, it's what happened. Cause yeah. I, I knew that, that that was a magic formula, all those people. And uh, so they did it, and you came, and the rest, I mean, well, I just remember that um, the guy that I worked for back in Chicago, his name was Don Van Gorp, and he was our regional manager. He had a big gig with CBS. Uh, there were only three others in the entire United States, and I, I, he liked me. He liked me a lot. He liked, every, he liked everything that was going on, which was cool. And I, so I went to him and I said, hey, listen, I'm thinking about um, going back to radio. And he was like, God damn it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. He said, I know for a fact that your first interest is your best interest, and that's radio, and I just knew that someday you were going to do this to me, but God damn it, please rethink it. I'd really love to keep you here. I rethought it, and I said, I've got an opportunity. I had a good lunch with Tom Bender. I had dinner with Jay Hoker. Hoker basically said back to Bender, I like the guy, but I don't know him from Adam. It's your call. You, you're higher here. So you had J.J. and the morning crew. The next thing you know, I'm doing middays at WRIF, 
And Arthur's following me in the afternoon, followed by Karen. No, I think Karen Sibeli was doing 10 to 2 at night. Yeah, in fact, she was. And I can't tell you it was... I know that I, I was there before Steve Costan, so I don't know who was doing 6 to 10. But I... I'll tell you who it was. Carl Coffey. Carl Coffey. Yep. It was Carl Coffey. And so Brando got bumped to the all night show. Carl Coffey went to 10 to 2. And now we had the lineup set up and ready to go. And indeed, off we went. And I didn't get, I got a few phone calls like, what happened to Brando? You know, I mean, but nothing overwhelming, nothing mm-hmm. big time. And I asked, Bender, I said, are you getting hammered by who's this guy doing? And he said, no. People are like, you hired Ken Calvary? That's, you know, more of those than, than what'd you do to Brando? And uh, and Brando's a, such a great guy. He's a really good and, guy. And just, a, it was actually the best thing that ever happened to him because he ended up going back to Flint where he was the king of the market in radio and got his job doing the news, became the Bill Bonds of Flint, you know, yeah. Flint, Flint News. I mean, it was amazing. So, 